paper is first which is the first subject uh it is uh, computer computer when is your science exam oh mm -hmm. when is your science exam uh, sir it is uh, on eight, uh, 18th 18th yes okay only a week is left yes sir okay okay so let's start this chapter any issue with you guys do you guys have any issue shall we start the chapter fiber to fabrics yes sir, yes, sir. okay abu you will also get to revise the chapter right now and rayan you will be studying the chapter for the first time right yes, let's sir. start the chapter then fiber to fabrics like how the fabric which we wore which we wear comes from a fiber comes from a piece of thread right now yes. getting it now <laughs> so you see <clears throat> the cloth which we wear it might either be made from plant sources or it might it might either be made from animal sources for example many people wear clothes made up of leathers nowadays it is not very common okay due to the unsuitable climate here tropi basically people living in the tropical region region it is not suitable to wear leather clothes but people who are living in the polar regions they wear animal leathers why because it helps to keep them safe and warm from the cold winds cold and icy winds right so people wear a variety of clothes and the variety of clothes they might either be coming from plant sources like the cotton clothes which you wear where does it come from it comes from cotton plants right now yes sir right now or the leather shoes that you wear or the leather jackets or the leather belts or the leather bags that people uh, uses that comes from animal sources right now so fiber is common whether you wear the cloth made from animal skin or whether you wear the cloth that comes from plants all of them consist of fibers fiber is what fiber is the smallest element in textile textile that refers to clothes the fiber is the smallest element in what guys in the textile all right <coughs> yes sir okay and using that fiber what do you do we make yarns we make threads we make threads so twisted strand of fibers is called as yarn or filament getting it now then using that yarn or filament or whether you call it as thread clothes are made as you can see here right so if i were to zoom it here and you can see very tiny strands of fiber let's yes. assume if you were to spot here very tiny uh, uh, strands of fibers can be seen here so you take that tiny strand of fiber okay you strand or uh, you twist them and roll them you get what you will be getting a piece of thread or you can also call it as filament then this filament or thread is used to make clothes in a cloth mill getting it now that yes. is basically the gist of the chapter which we are going to study we will be looking at what are the types of fibers we will be talking about its types okay and its sources right now and uh, what are the process through which it goes right now yes, okay so let's start with the basics of fiber so the first thing first that is fiber it is actually the finer finest part of the thread so if you were to take a piece of thread okay and look at the most finest part of that thread that will be called as a fiber so fiber is simply a thread like structure that is spun into ropes okay that is spun into ropes that is spun like a rope like a structure if you ever see a rope a rope is spun like this now right now yes, rope is actually yes, like this it does look something like this it is spun so in the same manner fiber is spun to obtain filament filaments or threads right so fabrics which we wear fabric basically means clothes the clothes which we wear it comes from natural or it comes from 
artificial sources also right now yes sir <clears throat> yes sir so talking about basics of fabrics so fabric is the finest the finest part of thread that you can see getting it now and fab uh, fabrics it is a uh, the clothes which we wear it uh, comes from the fabrics and the fabrics can be natural or artificial both the fabrics can be natural and artificial artificial basically means the fabrics which are made by humans in laboratories or made in factories man made clothes for example one of the example of a natural fabric is silk okay that comes from animals silk worms right now later in the chapter we will study how silk is obtained then you have another cloth called rayon r a y o n rayon that is actually a artificial cloth made by humans getting it now or for example clothes like nylon or polyester right now so if you were to touch a cloth cotton cloth or silk cloth or if you were to touch a rayon nylon or polyester cloth you will feel the difference between the quality feel the difference between the texture getting it now okay yes so the clothes which we wear it is made up of threads or filaments right now or these threads and filaments are actually made up of very fine <coughs> fine thread like a structure finer part very finer part called as fiber called as what fibers yes. getting it guys yes sir okay and if you were to talk at a mol at a um, atomic level if you were to see this fiber in a microscope you will be seeing monomers you will be seeing what monomers just like if you were to have some iron powder or a piece or a some very small particle of iron if you were to observe it under the electron microscope you will be seeing atoms of electro atoms of iron no yeah and the atoms of uh, atoms of iron will be holding on to each other they must be joined together right now guys yes in the same manner the fibers if you were to look them at a molecular level they are made up of monomers and these monomers are joined together they are joined together and that forms what that forms fiber then fibers join together to form threads and threads join together to form clothes is the analogy clear to all 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 of you is it clear yes sir <laughs> yes sir good let's move ahead then <laughs> okay so we have talked about basics of fiber now talking about the sources of fibers there are two types of there are two sources of fibers one is from plant second one is from animal right these two are classified as natural sources getting it now then you have another source that is called as artificial source okay so basically the classification is artificial source and natural source in natural source also there are further two more classification that is one is from animal another one is from plants right now so what are some of the fibers that comes from the plants guys this plant is of cotton here okay yeah right now yeah mm -hmm. so plant fiber whether you have cotton or jute here right now what is there if you were to um, if you have studied the cells of plants and animals there is a very uh, there is a 
very observable difference between the plants and human cells. If you were to look at your skin and touch it, touch your muscles, and if you were to look at the bark of a plant, the stem of a plant, which one is more hard? Sir, plant. Plant, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Why is it so? Because the cells of the plant are different than the cells of animals. The cells, the cells, the outer boundary of the cell of plant, if you were to consider this as a plant cell, this as a plant cell, it must be having a boundary also, just like our house also has a boundary. In the same manner, this plant cell also has a boundary that you call a cell wall. And it is made up of a very special material that is called as cellulose. Right? And cellulose gives it strength it gives us strength and rigidity that's why you see <laughs> plants are able to survive a variety of climate plants can survive in uh, draft also like many plants can survive in absence of water also they survive in uh, sunlight also they survive in rainy season also right now they are able to bear the harsh climatic conditions but that is not the case with humans because they do not have cellulose. Right now? So yes. plant fibers yes, that we will be obtaining here, whether it is cotton, jute, they are composed of cellulose. They are composed of what? Cellulose. So we are talking about the first type of classification under the natural source of fiber, we are talking about the first type that is plant fibers. Right? Some important point is that plant fiber is mainly composed of what? Mainly composed of cellulose. Getting it now? Yes, sir. That's why plant fibers are used to make what? Clothes and clothes and paper. Yes. Used to make clothes and paper. Right now? Yes, sir. Now, if you were to ask what is the special property of this cellulose? The special property of the cellulose is that it generates long, very lustrous fiber. Lustrous means that is shiny. That is shiny. It gives you long, shiny fibers, which are when prepared very appropriately, can give you very rich quality of fibers, rich quality of clothes. Right now? Yes. So if you were to see an example of jute plant here, see how a jute plant is made into jute fibers. Okay, you have jute bags. You must have seen jute bags in which grains are stored. Yeah. So if you were not to look at a jute bag, have you guys seen a jute bag or not? In which grains are stored? Yes, sir. I suppose you must have seen. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to look at the thread of the jute bag and look at the fiber, the fibers are very long. Yeah, they are very yes. long. And also if you were to look them closely, close enough then you will find that it is lustrous also somewhat lustrous also right now so the next point about plant fibers are that cellulose generates yes. generates long <coughs> often at many times it is highly lustrous Lustrous means what? It is that something that is shiny. Yes. Getting it now? Okay, so one of the example here we discussed about jute plant. Right now? Then you have guys another example. Okay, we can also study about cotton a bit also. Right now? The yes, five, we can also talk a bit about this cotton also here. Right now? Okay, so cotton you see it is obtained from the cotton balls as you see as you can see in the plants here the plants which 
on which they grow so these are called as cotton balls getting it here yes. so cotton is obtained from this cotton balls found on the plants which are directly from the surface of cotton seeds so what is happening here if you wear to spread this cotton bulb inside that cotton bulb lies the cotton seed getting it now so this fur is actually protecting the cotton seed which you see right now so inside the cotton fiber the cotton seed is hidden and what is the type of climate required for cotton to grow and what type of soil it requires it grows well in black clay soil and black alluvial soil it grows well in black clay soil alluvial soil right now yes riyan you are audible yeah yeah riyan were you say, saying something no sir um from brother okay so uh, we were talking about cotton right now yeah mm -hmm. okay now the next source of fiber comes from a variety of animals can you name some of the fibers that comes from the animals uh, you, wool very good all these animals in fact mm -hmm. you see here they are wool good you have silk Bone. Uh, good silk wool these are the <laughs> these are the fiber yeah. that comes from animals which one fur did you say skin fur fur yeah yes. wool or fur it comes from the goats and yaks and different types of sheep getting it now okay yes. so, so talking Sir, about the, the skin. Which one? Also the skin. The skin. Ah, uh, actually, the thing here is now, the skin is somewhat different from a fiber. The skin is a different thing. It cannot be compared with the type of fiber. That's why, ah, uh, in the chapter, you don't have to study about the skin of the animals. Although that is also used as a ah uh, cloth, clothing material. Getting it now? Ah, uh, for yes. a variety of other purposes, right? So, for example, the um, fiber that comes from animal. If you were to take example of wool here, right now. So, wool is the natural fiber that is obtained from sheep, goats, yaks, even camel also. It's a natural fiber that comes from where? Sheep, yaks, goats. and camels getting it done okay so you see these animals basically have got a outer covering of hair which is protecting their body which is uh, providing them with warm in order to survive in the harsh climate right now so whenever it's the on when whenever it's summer season then these animals what happens the um, people who domesticate these animals they do the process of rearing they do the process of shearing right now, in which they take the a very thin layer of skin along with the fur using a razor or using a trimmer getting it now so this yes. is how the fur that grows on the skin of these animals are traded okay and then it is sent to the mill where it goes through its variety of steps that we will also be covering then you have example of silk okay and the process of obtaining silk is considered very cruel very inhuman getting it now so silk is obtained from the mul cocoon of mulberry silk worm <clears throat> have you guys seen the cocoon of a mulberry mulberry yes, silk worm sir. yeah yes sir. good so it's a mulberry silk worm so that also we will be covering in the chapter right now <coughs> okay so first thing first let's talk about the wool that comes from the animals let's talk a little bit more about them right 
so uh, here you can already see the names of the animals along with their pictures given here right now so hair keeps them warm and wool is derived from these hairy fibers now wool is used to make a variety of wool fabrics like woolen clothes are made using the wool that comes from these animals carpets woolen sweaters saddle clothes are also made from the wool that comes from these animals right now yes sir okay now there's two thing that is related with the um, with this wool one thing is uh, rearing the process of rearing and the another thing is breeding two steps are involved in the production of wool rearing is as the name itself defines it is a process of breeding feeding and providing medical care to sheep right so suppose someone has to uh, someone wants to do the business of selling wool so he needs to uh, he needs to breed the animal first animals which are of good uh, which carries good genome which carries good gene which uh, yields high quality of fur so they are interbreeded that gives uh, uh, that gives offspring that will also be giving rich quality of fiber right now so rearing is the process of breeding it is a process of breeding so what is breeding breeding is simply selecting uh, let's say for example breeding is done in between sheep so the farmer will do what the farmer will pick up the sheep with the finest quality of hair growing in on its body okay jo achhi quality ke hoge then the farmer will take the uh, take another female sheep that also has got a very rich quality of hair growing on its body then they will breed the male and female sheep so the child born the child born out of breeding will also be having a very rich quality of hair growing on its body so the ultimate aim is to get maximum profit by selling the wool so it is a process of breeding so not only breeding apart from breeding they have to feed them also so it's a process of breeding feeding and providing medical care also yes abu and yes Ehan. sir <clears throat> then comes the process of breeding as i just mentioned you it is uh, like there are um, what happens some special uh, breeds of sheep are chosen in this method like if you were to see certain goats some goats are more bulky more taller and have more muscle mass in their body more muscles on their body right now yes sir yes sir okay so those are considered as special breeds even if you were to see certain uh, cows and certain buffaloes okay they have got a larger uh, body mass so if you, if you guys were to see the bull fights huh bull fight matches have you guys seen that So in the bull fight matches, you must have seen that the bulls are very yes, healthy and very muscular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So in breeding, special breeds are selected, especially for what purpose? Especially for the purpose to give birth to sheep which have soft hair growing on their body. Right now, the softer the hair. the softer the hair the costlier will be the wool so special breeds are selected to give birth to offsprings offspring means what to their babies that have very soft hair growing on their body so remember the two definition these definitions are usually asked in the example okay okay now what happens the skin of the sheep is very ha hairy okay and um, there are two types of fiber that forms its fleece okay one more term you guys need to be aware of like whenever if you were to see the farmer removing the hair from the body you will see that they remove 
a very thin layer of skin also along with the hair yeah that yes. is called as fleece fleece is what a thin layer of skin along with the hair that is called as fleece getting it now so the skin of the sheep you will see all of them are very hairy and there are two types of fibers which forms its fleece so the fleece have got two types of fibers two types of fibers so one type of fibers that uh, that is found in fleece that is called as coarse beard hair the coarse beard hair and the second type of fiber that is found in the fleece is called as the fine soft under hair the fine soft under hair what does the two things mean here hmm? the first one is the hair that you just see the above see the above uh, see above their body okay just by looking at uh, if you were to just look at the sheep the hair that is visible to you and me now if you were to make partition in the uh, in the hairs of the sheep okay then you will be able to see this fine uh, layer fine lining of hairs okay that are more softer than the outer hair yeah so the fine soft under hair that is near the fleece that is near the skin getting it guys <laughs> yeah yes sir okay so what happens uh, once it, the fleece has been taken out from the animal why the method of uh, wire cutting then the process of um then the uh, me, uh, then the method of processing starts right so first method is shearing okay then it is called as scoring we will be discussing each of them in detail then the next method that is starts is called as dyeing and then finally it is is straightened down that is called as is straightening okay then it is rolled and combed it must be getting confused here but don't worry we will be studying each of them in detail here right now okay so will we have basically talked about it okay before we go to the uh steps of processing like the wool that comes from the animal hair that cannot be just used you cannot use it to wear right now because it contains of so many bacteria so many dust particles are there so it needs to go through a variety of process so before discussing the process through which the wool fiber goes i want you guys to remember some of the name of breeds and the state where they are found okay usually these questions are asked also in exam so some of the name of breeds read them rehan read them no he jan nee ha padi pad bakharwal am i audible to you yes you are audible hmm then marwari then patan wadi right yes so in the states of gujarat you have got marwari and patan wadi breed of sheep here right now then in the states of jammu and kashmir you have got bakharwal okay then in the states of rajasthan okay or in the states of punjab you have got nali and lohi here rajasthan rajasthan punjab and punjab these states have got La uh, lohi and nali breeds of sheep okay then in the states of uttar pradesh or himachal pradesh you have got rampur gushair right now yes sir okay at least remember few of the names at least remember two names okay that will help you and answer now let's uh, study about the process through which the wool that is a uh, shape of the from the um, from the skin goes through getting it now <laughs> okay what do you see from the diagram what do you understand from the diagram here see the first step the first step the sheep are sheared to remove the fleece 
So this step is called as sharing. Yes, Abu, define the step sharing. What does it mean? Uh, the sheep uh, are shared to remove the fleet. That is called as sharing. Okay. Yes. Sir. So this is your step number one, in which what happened the fleece of the sheep along with the layer of the skin is removed from the body. Getting it now? Yes. Sir. Hmm. We are talking about the fleece. It is actually a layer of the skin that is also okay. removed, but it does not hurt the animal. Remember that. Right now, okay, mm. it's the extra growth of skin that has accumulated over its body. So this process is called as shearing, right now. Okay, mm -hmm. so it could uh, the person can be using a shaving machine also. Also, it is actually similar to the shaving machine that is used by the barbers, right now. Now, the, yeah. as I already said, that why it does not hurt the animal, why this step of shearing does not hurt the animal. Because uh, it's a extra uh, layer uh, of a skin that is actually of skin. that is actually dead. Yes, sir. Getting it now? Okay. And in which weather it should be done? In winters or in summer? Summer. In summer. Obviously, in summer, so that without their productive protective cover, the animals can survive. Okay, yes. and before the onset of winters, the hair regrows. Okay, so that the animal will be protected in the weather. Okay. <coughs> now, once it has been sheared, now it is to be processed to obtain wool and yarn from it, to obtain threads from it. Right now. So yes. it goes to the second step, step number two here. No, in a step number two, what's happened? You see the fleece of the sheep. Hmm? It contains a variety of unwanted substances. For example, dust are found in it. There are dried sweat of the animal. Right? No. So many unwanted particles are there. So it consists of dust. It consists of dead insects also. Okay. It consists of the dried sweat that comes off the skin of the animal. So you don't want that stuff right now. So the sheared hair of sheep is very well cleaned by washing with soap, soap or a detergent and a lot of water in tanks as you can see here. This is actually the step number two. Freeze is washed to remove the unwanted dust particles. Getting it now? Yes. Okay. So this process of washing of sheared hair is called as scoring. What have we termed it as? The scoring as C-O-U-R-I-N-G. Okay, Rehan, define the scoring. What is it? Yes, it? What is it? Define scoring. How do you define the scoring? Flames is washed to remove. Hmm. The process of hmm. washing, washing of washing. Sheared hair is called the scoring, right? So, scoring makes the uh, fleece of the sheep clean, right? Now, now it is now then dried after the scoring has been done, then the fleece is to be drought, dried. Okay, nowadays, the scoring which you see here earlier, people used to do it manually, but people. I will tell you in a moment that people used to develop certain diseases when they, they were doing it manually. So nowadays it is being done using machines right now. So after scoring has been done, we come to the another step here. As in the diagram here, you can see what is happening in the diagram number three, guys. Hmm? It is being sorted. Hmm? The sheet is twisted in a root called silver. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so as you can see here, after scoring has been done, what is being done here? The process of separating the fleece of a sheep into sections according to the quality of wooden woolen fibers are also being done. Hmm. Now here, I think one step has been uh, skipped here. Yeah. 
look here the wool that comes from the sheep are of different color now they have got different colors some are either uh, some are white some are uh, dark brown some are black so they need to be sorted so after scoring you will include a step number 3 here that is the step of sorting sorting according to the quality and according to the color of the woolen fiber getting it guys okay so for example you see um if you were to see some of the woolen fibers are long some animals grow long here some animal grows short here right uh, some of the fibers uh, that uh, some of the hairs of animals are very fine some of them are very core, coarse getting it what i'm trying to say here yes sir okay and also, yes sir so so in the step of sorting what is basically being done <coughs> the hairy skin is basically in a factory according to the different textures according to the different quality it is sorted out okay so what benefits it after you have sorted out every section of the wool that you are obtaining are of the same quality or of the same size or of the same color getting it now yes yes okay now so after sorting has been done what happens you get a small fluffy uh, you will see that small fluffy um uh, like structures are present called blurs what i do what i mean to say here for example you have this wool and uh, fiber wool is spread so you will see now there are tiny very tiny structures like this structures like this so that are very fluffy in nature and you call them as fluffy fibers yeah so if you were to uh, if you wore woolen clothes woolen sweaters many times what happens the fibers of the the fibers of the cloth cling together and form a ball like uh, ball like a structure yes yes right if you were to roll your fingers over your sweater you will be able to make a ball out of the fibers that comes out of the cloth so that is called as uh, uh, that is called as blurs here fluffy fibers called as blurs so that is manually that is picked out from it and it is removed getting it now yes sir okay then in the next stage what happened the sheet is not twisted into a rope called as silver it is called as silver actually not silver getting it now <clears throat> okay so now after okay. after See? it has been converted into a sleeve s l i v e r once the process of sorting has been done okay and once you have removed the blurs from the woolen fiber what you need to do you need to convert it into a rope like structure getting it now yes okay so here it is being converted into a rope uh, into a rope like structure that is called a sleeve right yes sir okay yes. now from the sleeve the yarn is wound to form balls of wool right now so you have got the sleeve like structure now out of it you can obtain the thread now okay <clears throat> So let me summarize the steps. What we just discussed. So the first step involved in it is the step of shearing, right? So in the step of shearing, the dead layer of the skin is removed along with the hair, right? What was the step number two? <clears throat> That was scouring, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, in which basically the fleece is being cleaned using a detergent or a soap. But nowadays, uh, earlier it was done manually. Nowadays, it is you know, done using a a machine, right? Then what happens in the third step? The process of separating is uh, is done, right? Now, according to the quality, according to the texture, according to the color, it is sorted into different sections. right so third step is what yes what was the name of the third step 
sorting now. Yes. According to the quality, according to the color, sorting is done. Now in the fourth step, what do we do? You were picking something. What was the that something which you were picking out? Hmm? You were take picking fluffy blubbers out of it. Okay. Pick the fluffy blurs out of it, fluffy fibers. That is called the blurs, right now. It's just like this. If you were to uh, wear a woolen cloth in winter, okay, usually if it was made by your grandmother, and if you were to roll your hand over your cloth, okay, roll your finger over the woolen cloth, you will obtaining a like ball like a structure of woolen fibers. Okay, that is simply the blurs. Right now, so once the woolen fiber have been sorted out now, manually the blurs are picked out of it. So these blurs are actually basically what now there are some particles, small particles that is still stuck in it. So around that particle, fibers cling together. They form a ball like a structure. Is it clear? Is it confusing or or easy? Are you guys getting it? What I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So. Uh... I'm not mm -hmm. audible to you before. Can okay, you are. You, yeah, I was saying that after sorting has been done, there are still some small particles left in the fleece. So around that small particles, now what happens, Rehan? Uh, fibers yeah. cling, uh, fibers cling around this, and it forms a small bulb, uh, a ball-like structure. So it also needs to be removed. So the it is called as blurs, B L U R S. So that is manually handpicked. Getting it now. Okay. Yes. Sir. After after this step, what happens? The fibers are straightened. These are straightened. Yes. Sir. Okay. The fibers needs to be straightened because it's a lump of, of, of it's a lump of fiber. Okay. So it needs to be straightened on just like you comb your hair. Okay. So. In the process of straightening, basically combing of the woolen fiber is done. It is combed. And the next step included rolling it. Rolling into what? Rolling into sleever, as you can see here. Okay. So it is being rolled here. Yes, sir. Yes, Rehan? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, you're audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just say that before rolling into sleever, you need to comb it out. Okay, just like sometimes uh, comb is stuck in your hair, you need to comb it hardly. You need to comb it. Okay, straighten your hair. In the same manner, we are straightening out the fibers here. And then it is rolled and twisted into a rope called a sleever. Remember the name, the sleever, very important here. All right. Getting it now. So once, okay. once it has been rolled, now, now what happens? <coughs> it is now converted into a very thick thread-like structure that is called as yarn, as you can see here, and it can be used for making sweaters now, yes. or for other purposes as as well. Right now, <coughs> okay, yeah. Now you see many times now, the person who are associated with the uh, uh, with the wool business, they they might catch several diseases. You might catch several diseases, as you can see here. Yeah, look at this diagram. What does this diagram show? Which step is it, is this? Yeah, is that the step of sorting, shearing, or scoring? Sir, shearing. Sharing obviously, right? The second one that looks as what? Rayan, you tell you tell me. <clears throat> Rayan, <clears throat> okay, I think he's having a network issue. Abu, what does this image shows you? So, so he's washing it. Yeah, he's washing it using the machine. Earlier yes. it was done manually. It yeah. is called as scoring. Yes, sir. 
if you remember uh, we talked scoring. about it the scoring you are getting it now <clears throat> so the process goes through this sharing then the scoring then sorting now you see this person is doing the process of sorting manually it is still consisting a lot of bacteria and unwanted substances in it the so sorry the sorting the person is doing this manually okay i will tell you in a moment that this person will be developing a disease that will be called as sorter's disease okay so after sorting is done after it is separated according to the color texture size etc then carding or basically carding is simply now actually it is same as combing right now so the process of combing is done you try to straight it out using this comb here then yarn is made out of it right now hope it is clear now many times occupational hazard develops occupational hazard hazard that comes due to the occupation which occupation here this is actually the hand of a person who does the work of sorting so it's actually the hand of a sorter and the disease which has which he has developed is called as sorter's disease yes abu yes sir <clears throat> so you see the wool industry is now it's a very important source of livelihood for many people in country like especially here in india yeah so people who does the job of sorting that is uh, separating the fleece of sheep into fibers of different qualities are called as sorters here it is very risky because sometimes they are infected by a bacteria which is present in the fleece and that bacteria is anthrax yeah so anthrax is a bacteria which causes the um disease called as sorter disease and in this disease basically what happens blood clots blood clots as you can see in the image the blood in the palm of this sorter's hand has started to clot clot getting it now <clears throat> now why this disease um is being faced by the people because the process of sorting is being done manually all right so the risk faced by people working in any industry due to the nature of their work are called as occupational hazard so suppose if someone is working in coal mine okay and he develops some kind of nasal infection okay or he develops infection in his lungs okay or he has developed breathing problems so that problems due to the nature of his work will be called as what occupational occupation hazard occupational hazard getting it yes sir okay so in today's class we basically study about the processing of wool what were the steps repeat the steps uh, <laughs> shearing uh, scoring mm -hmm. sorting uh, mm -hmm. combing then uh, uh, making the yarn making the yarn Okay, yes. what was the rope-like structure that you were obtaining called as? Huh? When it was rolled, when the fleece is rolled, then you obtain a rope-like structure. What do you call that rope-like structure as? A uh, fleece. No, fleece is a different thing. Now, the sleeve of which which I am talking about here, the sheet. Yeah. is twisted yeah. into a rope called sleeve getting it yes okay so in the next class we'll be talking about how silk is obtained okay before we end the class do this puzzle question there are names of animals that are hidden here from which wool is obtained find the names Mm. Rayan has left. He hasn't joined again yet. Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. Sir, in uh, one ring, there's one uh, word. Hmm. 
<laughs> the letters are jumbled. You have to make words out of them. And those are the names of animals. Hmm. Yes. What names Sir, do you see? Sheep. Sir, sheep. Sheep. For the first one, yeah. S H double E P sheep. Good. In the second circle. Sir, how is it like uh, in one uh, sir? There's like only three in it. Like in one circle, one word. Yeah, in one circle, there's one name. Okay, in yeah. second circle, there's one name. The third one also, there's one more name. Okay. <clears throat> it's an animal that can drink. Uh, that can lick drink many liters of water at the same time. Mm -hmm. And has got two eyelids. Uh, uh, camel. Camel, exactly. Okay. And this one more. This one's very simple. <clears throat> it has got long hairs. Uh, yeah. Exactly, yak. Okay. Okay then. Uh. All right then. So that is it for today. In the next class, we'll be talking about silk and sericulture as well. Getting it now? So study about it. I will be asking questions. Okay. Okay. And Abu. Um, uh, you are three chapters are left for you, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So do one thing now. I will be asking questions from you from the next chapter. This chapter is ongoing, but the next chapter that is part of his labors. Uh, by the way, will you please mention the name of the chapter? Apart from fiber to fabrics, which was the chapter? Uh, uh, that is coming in your sir, exam. Sir, uh, separation of substances. Separation of substances. Have you uh, revised the chapter? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. If you have revised the chapter, very good. I will be asking a few questions from the chapter in the next class. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, uh, hmm. uh, the uh, like the. Just uh, I will be asking a few questions. It's not a test, okay? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, like the main one is uh, getting to no plants. Getting uh, to no plants. Yeah, it was uh, in the PT one also. So then, uh, uh, our ma'am uh, said that 